What's up guys? Welcome to So Hills Kids and Happy New Year. I hope you guys are doing great. It is literally January 2022. I can't even believe it. I can't believe it. With everything going on in this world, 2022 doesn't even make sense to me right now. But we're here and I'm excited. And we are jumping into our new lessons. Yet we're talking about worship now. What is worship? And worship is really just giving glory to God. Anything that we do that gives glory to God. So sometimes we think worship is just singing or whatever, but worship can be anything that you do that brings glory and gives greatness to God. So we're going to be talking about a little bit about that. And we're still talking about the Israelites. That's right. We've got a really cool story about the Israelites today and something God does for them. So you guys are going to have to check out this video and see what he does. It's so cool. Moses led God's people from the Red Sea to the wilderness. They were hungry, so they complained to Moses. We wish we had died in Egypt. At least there was food to eat, they said. You brought us out here to starve. But Moses had not brought them out there to die. God was in control. God's glory appeared in a cloud and said to Moses, I've heard the Israelites' complaints. Tell them, in the evening you will eat meat, and in the morning you will eat bread until you are full. They will know that I am the Lord your God. Sure enough, quail came into the camp in the evening. In the morning, fine flakes like frost were on the ground. What is it? The Israelites asked. Moses said, it is the bread the Lord has given you to eat. The Israelites called the bread manna, which means, what is it? God told the people to collect just enough to eat for the day. If they collected too much, the leftovers went bad. He told them to collect twice as much on the sixth day because the seventh day was the Sabbath, a day to rest. The Israelites did not always follow God's instructions. Sometimes they collected too much manna, and sometimes they tried to collect manna on the Sabbath day. God provided for his people, and he wanted them to trust him and obey him. The Israelites ate manna for 40 years, the whole time they were in the wilderness. The Israelites moved about the wilderness as God told them to do. One day, they came to a camp with no water. Give us something to drink, they told Moses. Why are you complaining to me? Moses asked. The Israelites had forgotten that God was with them and had a plan for them. You brought us out here to die, they said again. Lord, what should I do? Moses cried out. God showed Moses a rock and instructed him to hit it with his staff. Water came out of it and the people drank. It was a sign that the Lord was with them. God provided water and manna for his people's physical hunger. Later, he provided his son, Jesus, for our spiritual hunger. Jesus said, I am the bread of life, John 6, 35. The Israelites needed bread to live for a little while, but whoever has Jesus will live forever. Guys, I really think that story is one of the coolest uh, when talking about this time where the Israelites were in the desert, God brings manna and quail. And if you don't know, quail is a bird. And so he, he brought birds for them to eat and he got manna for them. And manna is something that no one really knows what it is. You see, God rained it down from heaven, essentially. And it was these little, I mean, it describes it in the story as little flakes, little bits, little flakes of, uh, that it was white. Uh, it, and they said it tasted like honey wafers. Now, I don't exactly know what a honey wafer is, but honestly, that sounds really, really good. You see, God gave the people something good. We were talking about promises all last week, and this one really kind of fills into the promises as well, because God promised that he would deliver these people. And when they got into the desert, they had no food, and they were like, oh, we're going to starve. And in fact, let's look over at what they were saying. Um, in Exodus chapter 16, verses 3 it says, the Israelites, who are moaning and complaining, if only the Lord had killed us back in Egypt, they moaned. They sat around pots 
There we sat around pots filled with meat and ate all the bread we wanted, but now you have brought us into the wilderness to starve us all to death. But here's my favorite part. God still loves them, right? He's still there for them. He cares for them. And he gives them good things. Despite their grumbling and complaining, he does big things for them. You know, guys, this kind of reminds me of something. It reminds me of a cactus. We're talking about the desert. It really makes me think about a cactus because a cactus is an interesting little plant. You see, a cactus doesn't need a lot of water. If it gets too much, it'll actually die. It, it won't survive. It, it'll, it'll be overwatered, which is weird to me. I didn't know you could be overwatered, but it will. Um, it just needs a little bit of water, just enough water, and it'll be good. It doesn't need a ton. And you see, with God, he does the same for us. He provides what we need. He doesn't give us too much, as in he's not like a genie. He's not going to just give us everything. We play, pray for a PS5. He's not just going to give it to us or a new car. But he's going to give us what we need. Just like with the people of Israel, he gave them what they needed. They needed food, and he gave it to them. In fact, I think he went above and beyond. He gave them good food, honey wafers, and quail, and meat, and all that they needed to survive. And he gave them things because he provides for us. You see, we really kind of saw the Israelites not worshiping well. They were grumbling and complaining and upset and frustrated. But ultimately with God, he will give us what we need. And in turn, we can worship him. God's desire for that was to have the people of Israel trust him. The same is true for us. God gives us things and moves in our lives in ways that helps us grow in our trust with Jesus. When we trust God, when we trust what he does, we're able to grow and learn and understand and adapt. So I want to challenge you guys today. How can you trust God more? How can you worship him and praise him and grow in his uh, in wisdom and understanding of who he is? What can you do today to trust God more? I want you guys to think about that. And I'm going to see you guys next week with our next lesson. I'm super excited for all the things that are going on. And I cannot wait to teach more about worshiping God. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.